We're going to take you on a journey, ladies and gentlemen. This is called Polymuse. Polymuse is the podcast with myself. My name is Ben. We got my cousin here. Michael, hello. As always, the two of us, we co-host this experience, this situation called Polymuse. We're in season one. Season one, we're taking the deep dive on Lincoln Park. And today we're covering a thousand suns. Not one, not two. One thousand. A thousand. So buckle up. We got one thousand suns to cover today. Individually, one by one, we're going to do every sun there is. I like this album. It's kind of cool. It got me back into Linkin Park. It was, as I was saying on the last episode, uh, Minutes to Midnight was not really one that was on my radar at the time i had kind of fallen out of being a lincoln park fan a thousand suns was kind of their rebirth their reboot bring some fans back in and it totally worked for me i went and picked it up i think at a best buy bought it on cd again i wanted to have the full album experience because it's supposed to be a concept album and we'll talk about that soon what was your initial experience with a thousand suns as a work of art michael Uh, I certainly think I heard the singles, of which there are four. You know, it wasn't something that I heard when it first came out. Mm -hmm. Downloading music was more of the norm in 2010 when this was released. But I had moved more towards other kinds of music at this point. So I hadn't heard it when it first released. And I have never owned it in a jewel case. Never owned the actual CD. So this is something I streamed later on. There you go. Vintage now. I think that was the last one I bought. I didn't buy whatever comes after this, but this was cool. They talked in interviews a lot about how they had a more experimental approach to the whole thing where they went back to trying to get super interesting sounds. And that comes through a lot in there's, I think, six interludes on this, which is crazy. They all have different, basically, sound collages that Linkin Park had been making over the years where they weren't making albums. And they kind of threw all these ideas into this and tried to make music out of it, uh, which is a really good idea. Yeah, so writing for this started a little less than a year after Minute to Midnight was released. And the idea was to make a concept album, which was a little intense for the guys at first. And about halfway through kind of creating the album, they kind of second thought it. So by the time it was released what it was considered a concept album or like you said just a collection of collage of sounds is is kind of what they settled on so somewhere between a concept album kind of the vague term of the album as a collective is more of a meaning than the individual songs uh and the themes are kind of some social issues human fears technology nuclear warfare so we do have that throughout the throughout the album so it is both a, a concept a concept album but also some abstract throughout the but it's abstract piece. it's not like a concept album like a rock opera or whatever where you have a story it's like there's some themes there's a thematic way to where the music is all put together with the different samples and kind of the different cuts and the different experiments of music but that's kind of what the what the concept is it's that they're writing about these different themes they're using this experimental way to put the music together so again just just vaguely attached to that concept album title Uh, and and it was received very differently it did go platinum sold over a million copies in the united states over six million worldwide and it was received 50 50 from critics anywhere from this is kind of a a boring abstract piece with Mm -hmm. Not a whole lot going on for the few tracks that are full-length pieces on it to this is a great 47-length project as a whole. Yeah. So just a wide spectrum, and fans were split down the middle on it. So all kinds of different reactions when it was released. And just while we're on that topic, the what you said a second ago, all the tracks lead into each other, I believe. I believe they all lead into each other. And it was released as a one-track album where you could listen to it as a 46-minute song. My reaction as a fan coming back to the band after a few years, I thought there was way too many interludes. But overall, I liked the new direction they were pushing the sound. And there's a lot of good songwriting on here. I like this album a lot. There's some really classic moments where they their experimentation really 
clicks in and it's like kind of all the different sounds that they have gotten into over the years really work and it, there's just so much padding and like white noise and stuff in between that it can definitely kind of come off as not a really memorable experience overall yeah, at the time it was released, I didn't think much of it. Coming back and re-listen to it over the years and as a full piece in order to, you know, kind of review it here, I can appreciate it as a full project, but there are more, a few tracks and really pulling out tracks here and, here and there for me that I, are, are pieces that I'd go back and listen to. But I can appreciate it as a full project. It is list, interesting to listen to the full 47-minute piece. Of course, we have bonus tracks and, and remixes as well that we'll go over but as a whole piece i can appreciate it but for me it was more of just a few like we do now singles pointing out a few tracks the album did win best international rock alternative group at the 2000 echo awards blackout won best song in a video game for its use in fifa 11 at the mtv video game awards and there were a slew of other nominations at the teen choice awards mtv video music awards billboard nominations they were placement in a number of video games and transformers dark side of the moon also had a placement now there were a number of big artists that had big releases this year eminem dropped recovery great album. lady antebellum dropped need you now taylor swift speak now justin bieber my world 2.0 who could forget the classic classic drake thank me later kesha animal I did pick that up on CD. I owned that album. Usher, Raymond vs. Raymond, Susan Boyle, The Gift, some of the top album releases that year, just to kind of place in the grand scope of things. And who could forget 303, Streets of Gold. We were all party rocking. We checked out the making of the album Meeting of a Thousand Sons DVD. That was pretty interesting. You got to see all six members of the band you got Chester, you got Mike, you got Johan, you got Phoenix, you got Brad Delson, you got Rob Borden. They bring on Rick Rubin for the second time to produce a Linkin Park album. He's kind of giving them tips, kind of letting them know. They, it's, it's really funny. Like They keep talking when he's not there about basically how much they want to impress him. Like The whole conversation is them just being like, do you think he's going to like it? Is he going to like it? And they're talking about Rick. But all that being said, the album is kind of a mess overall, as we've expressed. <laughs> they, I mean, there are some moments. There's some moments in there. Uh, it is clear that throughout the whole the whole movie that they they made like a super experimental thing and then towards the end they got worried that they didn't have a hit single and that which they kind of they kind of do we'll get into that it's just really interesting to see them try to specifically do something different on every album and in the video they're like stressed out man like they are not a happy band and it's interesting that that is like the video that they put out where they're like, okay, this album is a mess. I didn't get that as a kid though. As a kid, I, it kind of worked. It kind of had a flow to it. It was kind of good. But now that I've seen that DVD and on the re-listen, I mean. Yeah, the DVD there only clocks in it just under a half hour. And it's really just chopped up pieces of the struggle that this album was to put together and the mm -hmm. struggle the conflict that they had as a group to kind of put everything together and it doesn't show how they all put the pieces together in the end it's really just showing the struggle that they had to decide on like you said the single and the the placement the sound that they're going for it explains the experimental process of building the album and how to make it kind of not Linkin Park kind of put a new mm -hmm. spin on it but it doesn't really show how they came to the final product. It's a little bit different in all the DVD releases prior, released with other albums. So it's just a, still a unique experience to give the insight of what happened and how they built this piece. It doesn't give you the full, full experience, just kind of the struggle yeah. and what it took for them to get here and all the outside pressure they were getting, both from the label and fans, third parties, and kind of how they, not even how they, came out of it to kind of put everything together, just kind of the struggles they were facing. 
And it's cool that they keep including a DVD with every album that they put out. It's very unique. That's yes. a cool idea. I think you got to, uh, you know, you spend more when you buy them that way, but overall, I mean, it's all on YouTube now, so check it out. So let's do this, man. Let's talk about the music, the myth, the legend, the concept album, The A Thousand Sons by the Linkin Park, our favorite band. I do have some nostalgia for this because of because it brought me back to Linkin Park, but I think we're going to have a critical mind about it now that it's a re-listen, now that we can check out how it fits into their overall sound. So here we go. So track one. We got the Requiem. We got an interlude right off the bat. Just a quick two-minute intro to the album, more or so, less. So I don't like intros in general. We got a lot of intros and interludes on this album. We don't. We're not going to rank any of them because it's not songs. No, this is not something you pull up or listen to as an individual piece. If you're listening to a full Linkin Park playlist. I mean, maybe. This is not something I'd put in my Linkin Park playlist. If you're listening to this whole album, such as yep. we are, this is something that I would listen to. But it's just a brief chorus being repeated. God save us, everyone. Will we burn inside the fires of a thousand suns for the sins of our hands, sins of our tongue, sins of our father, the sins of our young. And then that lyric and that melody that whole chant comes back in multiple other tracks throughout the album which is cool so it's like kind of a refrain to the whole album which makes the whole thing one piece of music with just all these different movements and sections and it all flows together it's cool as a piece of the album it's definitely not a song it's a sound collage these are all sound collages it's like six or eight or ten different some of its instruments, some of its nonsense. This one's like piano, random orchestra sounds, singing, crazy bass drum. I don't know if it's your, I guess it's your prelude or your title credits if it were a movie. It's kind of hype. It's kind of long. It's a two minute intro. It's kind of hype though. It's got a good, a good pace to it. It's certainly something that can pull you into the, what you're about to listen there's a little build to it. It gets your ear ready for, for what's to come a little bit, but it's just the same kind of thing repeated over and over again. And then track two, you got another interlude track called The Radiance. So we had The Requiem, now we have The Radiance, and it's a quote of a speech. A bunch of these are like uh, quotes of famous speeches. Do we got the notes on that? J. Robert Oppenheimer. Okay. So we got we got him, quotes from him. So J. Robert Oppenheimer gives us the intro here. He was often considered the father of the atomic bomb. He was a theoretical physicist and professor of physics at the University of, of Berkeley, California. And he had a big role in the Manhattan Project and World War II in developing the first nuclear weapons. So it's kind of a, a bunch of like really industrial, mechanical sounding drums some synths, uh, the quotes about the nuclear bomb, and then the thing ends with like a video game explosion, like something you'd hear in Doom or something. And those are the first two intros. So tr finally, track number three, we get a song, a song that they actually wrote with words and a chorus and like a meaning behind it and everything. Burning in the Skies, not a very hype song, very chill song. Starts with just piano, and then you get like some weird. There's all kind. It's white noise. It's weird effects. Some of it's cool. I like it when bands go that extra mile and just do a bunch of weird sounds in the background constantly. But uh, it, none of it is really special. <laughs> none of it really stands out in its own right. But they kind of do that on every song, including this. The drums sound really cool. They're like really slappy drum machine. Starts with Mike singing with harmony vocals and it just kind of chugs along with like a really clean guitar and a really clean bass that are like synced up like exactly so it kind of just sounds like a really fat guitar it's just very mellow you've got chester on the chorus and you have like you said mike doing the verses it's very bland it's not a very exciting track very pedestrian 
Just, just not a lot going on. It just kind of chugs. It doesn't really build. It doesn't really go like part A, part B. It just kind of chugs along on the same intensity and the same idea for the whole song. There is a lead electric guitar that comes in on the bridge section. And then they break it all down at the end and do, you know, they let's do it one more time with just vocals and piano. Let's do it one more time slower. And then, you know, they just kind of do it over and over again. And it, it's all just kind of the same chords so i gave it a c plus i think they tried something and they went for like a uh, a new experimental sound and they almost do they almost narrow in on something but it, they kind of are fall short a little bit of it and doesn't really grab your ear yeah it's not very interesting lyrically i use the dead wood to make the fire rise the blood of innocence burning in the skies i fill my cup with the rising of the sea and poured it out in the ocean of the debris that's so, the first verse and it can be taken a few different ways but i just it's just very bland very bland lyrically what's it about not, what does it mean not, to you yeah I, I mean it can be taken a lot of different ways meaning lies uh, I'm swimming in the smoke of bridges I've burned, so don't apologize. I'm losing what I don't deserve, what I don't deserve. So whether it's deserving or burning bridges with someone else and taking a more literal meeting. Or nuclear bombs. Or nuclear bombs. Just a very vague, nondescript, not particularly exciting view on things that, that I personally view. Combine that with the instrumentals that aren't particularly exciting. It's nice to see Mike... Nice to listen to Mike singing on this. Yeah, it's cool that that's how, the first thing you hear is Mike singing, which you don't hear. He's usually rapping most of the time. And coming off of the uh, Robert Oppenheimer quotes and his, you know, his nuclear background into this track, I would assume it's somewhere between an emotional state and a reference to nuclear explosions or nuclear, you know, the toxicity of being around other people, you know, so double meetings again sure. coming off the heels of, of the previous track. So, but just not terribly exciting. What do you rank around. it? C minus C minus track four is an interlude. How weird is that? So that song is bookended by interludes. They really are the slow burn on this album. This one's just like cricket noises and then like machine gun noises and cannon noises and then like soldiers marching noises. Kind of pointless. Then it goes into When They Come For Me. Another song, a real song. Track five, When They Come For Me. The song is awesome. It's got like a super slappy hi-hat and just an insane distorted like dubstep synth sound. Then they bring in like jungly, like tribal sounding percussion, like all kinds of like bass drums and just giant drums that they're playing with mallets. And I'm not even sure what all of it is. It just sounds like some kind of like made drum that you would find somewhere. So the quote from the kind of the previous interlude there uh, does translate translate to all the platoons pay attention right now and kind of leads into this jungle jungle sound here so that's a good good point and kind of this warfare again this nuclear warfare kind of theme and sound we have going on here so it, it does tie together kind of <laughs> like loosely so you got this whole thing with mike rapping and then you've got like an awesome chanting chorus where they're just doing all kinds of ahs, like up on the mountaintop, just a bunch of people all chanting type of chorus, which is really cool. Then they do both of those again, both sections, the mic rapping section with all the, it sounds just like random percussion. Like they're hitting garbage cans or boxes or just any kind of random. It sounds like cavemen, like just playing on drums that they made out of crap. Uh, which is really cool, really atmospheric. And they mix that with the super futuristic, like distorted synthesizer. Then they bring in all the like crazy chanting. It's not even lyrics. They The chorus is literally just, ah. Then the bridge kicks in and the bridge is completely different. And it's like a Chester part where he's singing and it's like a really pretty, like clean synth comes in and he's like this angelic, 
voice that comes through. And then they bring the jungle stuff back. It's like a movie where they're bringing all these parts in and out, all these different sections, and it just moves through different musical scenes, really. Different scenes. But they bring back both beats, essentially, at the same time with the bridge. <laughs> uh, they bring the chanting and the drums back underneath chester singing this new pretty part and they do all kinds of freestyle like hey hey like oh, it's like a bunch of tracks of people just yelling it's pretty cool it works as a as a piece of music where it's bringing you through all these different sections we do have brad and chester on the outro with a little bit more spanish for you translating to listen to me pay attention again following in our our theme of kind of wartime here and a kind of apocalyptic this track along with waiting for the end were two of the songs performed for a saturday night live performance to promote the album don't know that those two would have been my personal choice and the ending is like a crazy jam they just do it for all it's worth. They bring it back around again and just play the riff, both riffs, all of the riffs all stacked on top of each other, and they just jam and jam and jam for five minutes almost. Okay, song. Yeah. I gave it an A-. minus. Ooh, A-. minus. It is a unique sound for them. I would give it a solid B+. Plus. I don't know that I would be listening to it too often. It is a unique sound. Mm-hmm. It's not Linkin Park falling in line with some of the previous things they've done. Yeah. Again, very experimental. Falls into the theme with their concept stuff that they've yep. been doing with this album. So it fits right in line with what they're trying to do. Each section is so different and so just the sound. They really nail what they were trying to get into where it's the sounds of it are so unique and so different from each other but like put together in a new way they've got the futuristic sounds and the kind of jungly weird sound natural sounding percussion and they they nail it on this one yeah they bring in like kind of mc style rapping again they're always trying to find ways to mix the rap element back into it some of them work some of them don't it's some of them are forced some of them kind of are more natural this one works Lyrically, the track does reference The Gift and the Curse from The Blueprint by Jay-Z, which, mm -hmm. of course, the group had worked very closely with before. And it's just kind of uh, exactly what it sounds like. Of, <laughs> of course, yeah, the seventh member of Linkin Park. When They Come For Me, kind of what the song is about, as it implies. Yeah. Someone who can't be controlled, someone who's a very high esteem. Not, I mean, thinks very high of themselves and like someone's out to get them. It's more or less what the song is about so there you go let's do track six robot boy what do you think a robot boy starts with a piano then you got a lot of drums building lots of ooze uh you got a lot of harmony vocals i uh, like chester and mike i think singing together on this one there is no chorus on this song it just repeats the same part over and over and over it sounds like, yeah, the other band members could be involved as well. And when you watch the DVD, you do see them going through various vocals as well. So it's very possible you have other band members on here, and it sounds good. And it, it's nice to think that, that they all participated vocally. That's good yeah. to think of. It was a team effort. Just the six guys singing songs. But just another kind of strange, different, if you will, unique song and the unique track. It's basically just clean piano and weird scribbles and samples and some good harmony vocals, but it just repeats and repeats. It's just an endless vamp. It never changes. There's not another section anywhere, and the lyrics are kind of boring. I like a lot of the sounds. A lot of the sounds are good. They bring a lot of different effects and samples in and out throughout it, especially at the end. They kind of jam on the outro again. All of the actual songs are like over four minutes because they've all kind of jam on some of the sounds on the outros, which is a good idea. I gave it a C. I don't really like this song. It's not really yeah. a song. No. It's just a vamp. Well, and it's it's fitting to the kind of a writing of it lyrically being kind of emotionless you've been hurt you're kind of just 
rolling through the world. And that's how the song feels a little bit. I like the singing. I like more piano. It just feels like this could have been fleshed out in various areas to really make it stand out. But as it is, it just is kind of a droning, take a nap kind of song, I guess. Yep. Okay. Uh, C? That's what I said. Okay. Solid. Solid C's all around for the robot boy. We got track seven, Jornada del Muerto. It is an interlude yet again. It shares the name with Desert, which was the site of Trinity, the first ever, ever nuclear bomb, and was detonated as part of the Manhattan Project, which took place during World War I, which was a research and development project that first led to the first nuclear weapons. So that's our tie-in here to what we've been listening to and the, the product that we've got on display here. And it's a lot of, there's like weird angelic like background kind of singing there's guitars in this there's all kinds of instruments in this like it's a huge sound collage there's who knows like 20 layers maybe of instruments all doing different things not a song kind of interesting i still don't understand why it's so many interludes maybe some of them could have been songs but nevertheless we go to track eight waiting for the end this was a hit. Is this the first single we've come to? It has to be because this there is, hasn't been any songs yet. Waiting for the End is the second single from the album, and it also had a music video. All music videos were directed by Johan, and thankfully, all the music videos for this project are a lot better than any previous Linkin Park projects. It's a lot more realistic. Waiting for the End specifically is a lot of technology and we see the Lincoln Park members and it's just it doesn't always correlate with what's going on with the songs but we get some a lot more realistic music videos going on I think waiting for the end is an awesome song dude it starts with like a really unique sounding dirty guitar and like a really minimalist piano and then this crazy shuffly drum thing comes in where the drum sounds super unique it's like not a normal drum set there's all kinds of weird percussion sounds in there and then there's like this backwards guitar sound that goes in and out and the whole thing is just like a perfect canvas for mike to rap over and hit in the different pockets of these different weird rhythms and just hit vocally with his raps in all these little crazy rhythmic shuffly percussion parts and it's really fresh sounding even 10 years later 11 years later it's like a super unique fresh sound for pop music and for lincoln park i really like how it leads right into the chorus where the chorus is like it's the same shuffly drums and everything, but it's like Chester singing and it has a way more clean feel. And then there's a bridge with like gang vocals all like backing up Mike. And then there's like a scratching solo at the end. So the whole thing, I gave it an S. I think it's a really good song. I liked it when it came out. I thought it was super unique on the radio. I thought it, brought a really unique because it's not guitar heavy it's like a a new way to use guitar and piano in a song it's like its own genre essentially like nothing sounds like this song and i i gave it the s for all of those reasons it's catchy as well very catchy another waiting for the end of things vibe fitting with the album and also fitting with something kind of relatable which can be taken out of the context of a nuclear war, but just waiting for the end. So it's relatable. It could be on the radio today. It's both non-Lincoln Parky and in their experimental ways, very much Lincoln Park. I love this song as well. I would also give it an S. Heck yeah. S is S is all the way around. And I like, if you check out the music videos, they're much better. I'm not saying music videos are great for anyone really mm. i'm not a big fan of music videos in general but they're they look a lot better and they could still stand if they were released today 
So yeah, this was actually the second single released after The Catalyst, but I this is the only one I really remember being on the radio. It is fresh. They nail it. It, it pays off where they're trying to get unique sounds and unique song structures and unique takes on everything. This one totally works. They nail it. It's all worth it, it just for waiting for the end. Track nine is Blackout. Another very cool song. Another song. Oh, my goodness. You have to get halfway through the album to get some real tracks back to back. Starts with like a synth intro that just builds and builds and builds with drums, like kind of slowly, slowly building. And then just an awesome, like stompy, stompy rhythm with Chester just annihilating the screams, just screaming his head off. Sounds so good. The whole thing has like really clean, natural piano uh, underneath it. Chester raps on this song. Wonderful flip. Kind of flipped it all around on us. We do get both vocalists, though. And on theme for Linkin Park about secrets you've been keeping, push it back inside. So on theme for them and the content there. And really something that could have been placed in other albums as well uh, from a lyrical perspective. As you said, instrumentally, very much a little bit of electronic almost, and just very, very much fits into what this album is doing electronically. Uh, excuse me, musically. It's got the first section with Chester singing and rapping and screaming. It goes into like a crazy dubstep section where they have sampled Chester's voice and have cut it, cut, chopped it all up in weird ways. Then the third section of the song is Mike singing to more of a clean, distorted, psychedelic synth. It's another one of those songs, uh, like Waiting for the End and like Burning in the Skies so far on this album where the song structure is so weird where it's like each of the different sections can fit inside of each of the other sections but they are doing such drastically different things even though it's a similar riff and chord progression it's like different whole different genres of the different sections of the song even though musically and rhythmically and chord chord wise it can all fit like together you know like not quite polyphonic because they don't really go through with it on most of them and have the polyphonic chorus like they have done on certain songs but it's that same kind of idea where all the different parts of all the different riffs can basically like stack on top of each other that's a really cool way to write a song and they just kind of have them flow into each other non-traditional song structure just where whatever sounds right for the next part of the song. I gave it an A+. Plus. I gave it an A+, plus as well. It did have a remix on Underworld Awakening. I just thought it was worth note because this album did get a lot of placements on different movies. A track coming up had was on Transformers, video games, so it did get a lot of placement in various other platforms. Track 10, Wretches and Kings. We do have Mario Savio, Free Speech Movement Speech from December 2nd of 1964. He was a political activist. As we see, he very anti-war in Vietnam, which was big for the time, of course. So very fitting for our theme here on track for the album. And we will right into the rest of the track here. And it's a real song this time. Starts with a crazy hi-hat pattern, just really snappy, clappy hi-hats and more kind of dubstep inspired synths. Not really a dubstep pattern or anything, but just crazy grindy synth sounds going on. Mike hops on the mic again. He's doing some more kind of MC style, kind of old school style vocals, like everybody get down back to the front, to the side, to the side, that kind of stuff. I think it kind of works. I think it's, you know, they're always trying to find ways to bring that old style of rap into like a new context and a new style of songwriting and, and sounds. So that's what they're doing on there. A lot of sound collage, even on the different little interludes uh, between the sections of the song yeah like crazy distorted electric guitar all throughout it just playing random crazy nonsense and then it kind of just ends with a bunch of hey 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 and then they bring back the sample of of the activist speaking at the end so 
Another insane song structure, just all over the place. There's no real clear chorus, verse, anything. It's just different ideas that fit together, that kind of fit on top of each other uh, rhythmically and uh, structure-wise and chord structure-wise, but it's not really a song. It's just like a bunch of riffs that are all basically the same riff. (laughs) Yeah, Operation uh, Operation of the Machine was the speech by Mario. When the operation of the machine becomes so obsidious, make you so sick at heart, then you can't take part. And that's echoed throughout the sentiment of the song as well. Very much about control and fighting for resistance. And we get that with the aggressive lyrical mic coming across. Very distorted, sliced up. So it's all reflected nicely in this package here. Do you like this song? It's good. It's not something I would necessarily queue up on a regular basis. It's I don't queue up a lot of things that have speeches, I think, queued in the beginning or end of them. It's a B, I think. I gave it a B minus. So we're pretty close. We've only been like a step off on most of these. Let's do track 11, Wisdom, Justice, and Love. Here we go. We got Martin Luther King speaking, a sample of his speech. It's a minute and a half. That's basically all it is. It's Mike playing guitar, and you got Martin Luther King. A Time to Break Silence, delivered April 4th, 1967, the Riverside Church in New York City. Uh, Also about the Vietnam War Mm -hmm. and the worst place should we be warring. It's a good sound collage. It works. It's a heavy feeling to it. You know, it's not, you could do it and it would be cheesy, but it's not. It's the piano is perfect for the point the speech is trying to get across and the whole idea behind this album. And then at the end, it kind of just repeats and his voice gets more and more distorted and more and more robotic and more and more crazy and more and more weird. And it goes into track 12, Iridescent. This is a C plus song. I don't know what to tell you besides that. Because it is so just <laughs> bland and boring and just the power ballad that is just never changes. We do get everyone singing along in the background for this track. It was just one of the major songs in the album, one of the major singles. It does have a music video as well, and it's it's done well. It has them in a very godlike layout. I think the song's kind of a drag, man. It's never changes. It's cheesy. They try to make it all angelic and heavenly, and it's just kind of bland sounding. They got the gang vocals again. It sounds all right. The You know, it's one of those stadium-filling melodies where they're trying to touch as many souls as possible with just an anthem of a chorus of a... It just doesn't really work for me, man. After coming off uh, the power ballad album of Minutes to Midnight, I think they've definitely got better power ballads in the catalog. The drum sound is really interesting. It's really chimey and kind of weird and shuffly, and I like the drum sound. Yeah, I don't really like most of the singing and most of the words and most of the chorus or any of it, really. It is about hope. As we get towards the end of the album, kind of the brighter side, but it's it's not very interesting. It was on the Transformers film that came out at the time, Dark Side of the Moon. Oh, this is the one. This this is the one, but it's not particularly interesting lyrically and instrumentally. I don't know that it really catches my ear other than I do like kind of the chorus singing. But it's not one of my favorite tracks. How do you feel about that C plus? I think that's right where I'm at with you as well. We got thirteen. Guess what it guess what? It's an interlude track. It is not a song. Fallout. The fallout this time. It's like a robot voice and some synths and it's creepy and it's boring. And then we go to Lyrically it's actually the same as burning skies okay so there's a callback making it all one piece of music yeah uh, but it's very robotic and just kind of drowns out you got 14 the catalyst this was the big hit 
So in that video, they were debating and debating, like, what should the first song be? Oh, no. I gave this song a C, just a straight out C, because I don't think this is a hit, really. So it was used in the video game Medal of Honor, uh -huh. which ironically kind of fits what's going on with the, uh, the video game, kind of fit into the theme of the music and what's going on with the album. Again, this is, like I stated, this was not an album that I drew me back into Linkin Park because I heard the singles and I didn't think they were particularly strong. Mm. It wasn't something that drew me into the project. I'm not a big fan of this track, although a lot of folks will attribute this to being a big Linkin Park song. Maybe some younger folks will think this is one of the first Linkin Park songs I heard. It sounds so bland and generic somehow. I mean, they're all singing on here. They're all there's different tones, there's different sounds, there's different influences. It just comes off sounding so... It just feels like black and white. Like there's no color to the music. It's just white noise. It just comes off as white noise for whatever reason. It's The lyrics are bad and cheesy. Uh, I think they're really generic. They're not singing about anything. They're pretending like it's some kind of like call to arms of an anthem, but they're not. It don't. It doesn't really grab you. The poetry doesn't really work. It just seems cliche. That's what I'm trying to say. There is some really cool scratching kind of instrumental interludes between like the verse and the chorus and stuff like that. The drum sound again. The drum sound is super unique. They made the drums sound unique on every single song, which is really cool. But this is like, it. The, unfortunately, this is kind of the generic. They invented this sound too. I can s see this being pushed as a hit and being featured in video games or movies or whatever. But this is kind of bad modern era Lincoln Park, where it's this is like. You know, I feel they're. I don't want to say they're trying to write for the radio with this one, but it's it's a certain sound. I like waiting for the end a lot better. That's a hit. That's a. It's experimental and catchy. I think this is neither. I think it's just bleh. It did have a music video as well. Very slow motion, stop motion caption. It's kind of cool. Okay. And that's about the best part of the whole song. The Again, video. pushes a single. I don't distort it at times, mute it at times. Yep. It's not exciting. It's not exciting, but it's trying to be exciting. They think it was. A, they think it's exciting. Can you explain that? I can't. It, it's so hard to explain. They do so much instrumentally. Yeah, like a ton, all over the place, and this is just not a great example of that. Lyrically, it's unexciting. It's not a great anthem. We don't have any great screams but we don't have any great singing it's somewhere in between like a little yell but I, there's like a thousand layers not, of it, music and instruments on it it's like they spent so much time it's a lot of blah slopped on slop slapped on top of it it's just a lot of stuff slapped together that's it fine it comes off sounding and it comes like out sounding noise. just fine yeah. I, I just i don't know i don't like getting this is not one of the songs for me yeah, I don't what do like you think track. great it C, C. <laughs> Give the song a C. I guess C minus. I don't know. Do I go worse on this? I really can't decide. I said C. Okay. It's still a good song. Okay. The Messenger. They made another new style of music on this one. They did. This is like screamo acoustic, and it is great. It is not cheesy at all. It's so genuine the way he sings it he's just screaming his head off to an acoustic folk guitar song and it's just beautiful like that tone that idea of just that aggression and emotion is completely unique this is its own style this song is its own genre of music unto itself of acoustic screamo or whatever it is and i gave this song an a plus yeah chester just singing and screaming very powerful very emotional when life leaves us blind love keeps us kind it keeps us kind that's the chorus we have some more powerful verses here it's great over the simple acoustic guitars you stated it's just it's when you strip it down acoustically i think it really draws attention to the lyrics and what's going on and the fact that he's screaming and again as we stated he's always 
on point. He's very in tune and it's very emotional. I, this just works. It works very well. The Messenger, A+. Plus. Yes. It's like the ultimate fist pumping, waving your lighters in the air song. They nail it, man. Not sure how it fits in the album. I think it works as an outro as well. It's a really good way to kind of send you off with a great song like that. Save one of the best for last. You can't top this. They can't go pl- back and play a metal song or a rap song or a goofball song after this. You know, this is just like, here you go, man. This is like they're tearing the instruments down. They're turning the, the stuff off. They're turning the lights on. And they're just screaming one last song for you. Except that there's four more songs for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is a great closer for the album. Chester did state that it was written about his children that had you know, been growing up through the years of them writing music and it was getting more difficult. But in the context of the album here in the full project, it's just a great outro of love, keeping us kind, great positive message to end on after all of our nuclear explosion talk. It's like melancholy. It's like, you know, life hurts, but you keep going through and you see the beauty in it and you just that's how you keep growing you get your scars and you keep moving forward it's just that kind of melancholy happy but sad but you're alive feeling after the war is over you just kind of got the peaceful little just all the dust settling type of music that's what the music video should have been had they recorded one had they done one So there were a few bonus tracks. Some of them are just live versions, which we're not going to cover, but we are going to talk about and grade the remix tracks. There's also one new track. So the first remix song we're going to talk about, it's The Catalyst again, the one they tried to push as a hit that we didn't really like. It's The Catalyst No Brain remix. No Brain was the winner of a contest called Linkin Park Featuring You. When Linkin Park announced the album's first single would be Catalyst and the release date, they held this contest and stated fans could download the stems for the track and either rewrite new parts and download the stems or, you know, incorporate different instruments, remix it however they wanted to, basically, with the downloaded stems. And he won the contest with this remix that you're going to hear if you listen to the album, it was originally included as a bonus for Napster and Best Buy purchases. So that's where this remix by No Brain comes from. There were various other, you know, runners up and they had their tracks released as various B-sides and, you know, side projects as well. This song is okay. It's kind of bland again. I don't think that he fixed the catalyst. I gave it a C again, so it's right on par with what I gave it before. You got a chill section and kind of a jumpy section. It's all over the place. He's just chopping it up and putting kind of random beats behind it. I don't like the chill section because the way that they've chopped the vocals doesn't really hit in the right way. It's not really on beat. It's like it just doesn't really work as a remix. He's trying too much and just throwing everything at the fan and it just comes out kind of just as bland as it already was. I think I like it more than the original, but I'm not the biggest fan either of remixing a track that I didn't like as much to begin with. If he'd really dialed down some of it instrumentally and moved some parts around, it just could have gone a lot of different directions. I kind of like what he did on some of the more relaxed pieces a little bit, but all in all, it's not something I'm pulling up to listen to again this is a c so the next bonus track is the song blackbirds blackbirds was kind of a non-album single originally that was released in a really roundabout way they had a mobile app video game designed by lincoln park mike designed the sprites of the band members and it's a mobile game that was released it had all the lincoln park music in it like all the old hit songs as 8-bit video game beeps and boops type of songs that Mike made himself while the band was on tour. So he's hand-making a video game about the band, and when you beat the game, you unlocked a new real song, 
which was a hit, a single that they just buried in there that they didn't use for anything else. It eventually made its way as a bonus track to A Thousand Sons just because they, I'm sure they felt like they just had to get it to some more fans. But originally, this was just a total secret just for the most hardcore of the hardcore fans who not only knew about the Linkin Park video game, but played it and beat it. <laughs> this song is a banger. This is awesome. This is an awesome track. We've got our Chester vocals. Halfway through, we switch to Mike rapping. It's very vivid imagery as far as the vocals. With blackbirds following me, I'm digging out my grave. They close in, swallowing me. The pain, it comes in waves. Oh, I'm man. getting back what I gave. So just another really heavy Chester song where he's singing about death, singing about kind of the end of times, just darkness and hopeless, but it's awesome. Just the the performance, the emotion, the music, the the whole thing. Like, it's a really good song. It's like we always talk about where they try to bring rap into new styles, like using the sounds of rap and the styles of rap into other kinds of music. And that's kind of that's absolutely what they're doing here. It's kind of like a boom bap style drum loop that goes through the whole thing. It's just a really simple hip hop style drum loop. But it's Chester singing this amazing like ballad, folk song, rock song, like it's definitely not hip hop style vocals, but then you do bring Mike in on the bridge to do a rap part, bringing it all together, man. And we do bring some strings in as well. Violins, Gotta do cellos, it. basses. With Mike Shinoda, like. you got the Mike signature violins, man. He, he's got to put violins on everything. It would have been nice if it, this track could have maybe faded out into just uh an orchestra type sound which it doesn't it's it's still very powerful very powerful wordplay very powerful imagery a great switch up between the vocalists this is a great this should have been on the album it wouldn't have fit the whole concept but it should have been on a album mm -hmm. i give it a b plus it's not my favorite I think it could have been even more unique if they had done something even weirder on the bridge. But I think they had an idea. It was unique. They went for it. They nailed it. They executed it. It's just I think they could have gone even farther with it for that A. But I think it earns that B+. plus. It's a hit. It's a hit. I'm giving it an A. They could have done a lot of different things instrumentally. But sometimes you just don't need to and they're known for going all over the board so i think the the switch up with what they did vocally and what they've accomplished on the track is is great so i think this is a solid a so then you got a couple b-side remix tracks that made it to the b-sides of a couple of the singles you got waiting for the end remixed by the glitch mob this is an awesome song. This is what I'm talking about, dude. Reanimation style, where they send it out, they get people sending it back to them, and it's a totally different song from the original with pieces. They chop it up into pieces, dude. I think this is awesome. Yeah, this is a great track. It's something you could put in a mix, not necessarily for Linkin Park, but of the style. This is great. This is enjoyable. It's very reminiscent of Glitch Mob's kind of signature sound. Very much so. Doesn't really sound like Linkin Park at all. But they're taking pieces and samples of Waiting for the End and just taking it to a totally different place. It's like Waiting for the End Part 2. Like it's a different song with a lot of the same lyrics and themes and kind of the same overall chugging along rhythm to it. But this is so much more alien and distorted and weird. They've got some really cool sounds in here. They definitely picked up where Linkin Park left off and took it to the next level. Like you can tell they loved the original and just had that it inspired them, you know, to take it to this far. That's how the reanimation stuff was. I think making me think of reanimation gets you an A. This is a A minus for me. Something I'd pull up and re listen to for sure. They could have gone a little bit crazier with it, I think crazier crazier uh, but this is a solid remix i like this a lot final b-side remix is the catalyst again i think they finally fixed the catalyst i actually want to listen to this one it's like a dance remix they added a really crazy like two-step beat to it remixed by does it offend you yeah the dance punk electro house synth pop new rave band 
from Britain, Camden, London. Does not offend me at all. This is like a, a dance hall banger. This fits right in, that kind of playlist. It's way better than the Catalyst. Yes. Holy cow. I bump them all the way up to a B on this. I'd bump it up to an A minus. Well, dang. Maybe I'll bump it up to a B plus because that's what I wrote down. That's solid. Yeah, this is definitely a track that you would slip into not any kind of Lincoln Park rotation. No. <laughs> but something you can definitely bump to at a party, some kind of house vibe, I guess it would be. It's a cool song. Dude. Yeah. This should have been, you know, maybe exposed more somehow. How did this not be the one they picked for the album remake? I don't know, but it made it as the B-side. Yeah, this should have made it. Blackbird should have made it. It's, again, a reanimation quality remix. Yeah. Doesn't give them the A for that. I'll get, they got to have the B plus, though. B plus. Okay, that's solid. I'll stick with the A minus. So that's all the remixes, and that's all the regular album. We made it through A Thousand Suns. Definitely experimental. Overall, I definitely enjoy it. Waiting for the end, like I say, it's all worth it just for that. Some of, When the experiments land, it's super satisfying when they really nail it and the different elements come together and they figure out how to make all the new sounds work it's really cool but obviously there's a lot of white noise and filler on this thing yeah i can understand of course listening to it as a full project but i don't find that satisfying yeah <laughs> like pulling out a I couple skipped, tracks and listening to it i skip the interlude man i just go to the bangers yeah Fine project, few highlights. So there you go, guys. We are the guys. I'm Ben. I'm Michael. This is called Poly Muse. It's a podcast, but it's an experience. It's a journey. Poly Muse. A Poly Muse is someone who has multiple different, all kinds of different tastes in music. And that's what Linkin Park is. That's why we're covering them to start our journey. Next week, we'll be covering another album. Thank you and good night. <laughs> say, some, say the part about the social media. Or something. Please follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Check out our episodes. Share our episodes. Check us out every week. A new album review every week. We're bringing them straight to your ears, guys. Tune in often. Tune in every week. We love you. We cherish you. We thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thanks a lot. Goodbye.